all the plans must be reflective of the priorities and I would request you please see that water and sanitation receive the priority. In the first few years we have been liberal, you know that. The first year 30,000 crore was just sent out. 30,000 crore tight grant. In addition there was an untied grant. The next year, the last financial year, also about 26,000 crore went out without too many questions asked. This year also 16,000 crores have gone out already but there are now more questions being asked. First and foremost, it has to be ensured that whatever money flows has to flow out. It cannot sit in the treasury. So please work with your finance departments to make sure that the money transfers immediately. All this issue otherwise about giving interest and all becomes very complicated. Can, cal calculating how many days of interest the treasury has to pay. It has to be paid. That audit will not leave and rightly so. So let's make sure that the grant is transferred to the rural local bodies in whatever formula you have determined. You know that there is a small flexibility available to you for how much to go at district level, how much at block level. That money must be utilized properly for the purposes for which it has gone, especially for the tight grant. Untied, of course, there's a greater flexibility, but still there is also a set of activities given. And now we will be looking at both the utilization and the audits. So that I'm sure I am not going to dwell on it. It will be covered the auditing required for the previous year to the last, the last year going forward, role of state finance commissions, all of that. Sunil will tell you about that. I would only want to request each one of you. We are all part of a historic opportunity. Let's work together to seize that. And let's try and make our villages into the kind of um, model or, or at least the kind of give them the environment, give them the health, give them the opportunities that they deserve and that we all deserve. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'll request Secretary, sir, to share his thoughts. Yeah. Uh, good morning to all participants here. My fellow secretary, DWS, who has uh, very clearly and in preci precisely set out the sort of manner in which priority is to be accorded to water and sanitation, especially when it comes to utilization of 15th FC devolution funds. Over the last three years now, it was in April 2020 that we had launched this audit online program. COVID, we were in the midst of national lockdown, but still we launched this. We undertook training of all your local fund auditors. And even in the first year, when we were doing audit for 1920, 2019-20, it was the last year of 14th FC. We were under no compulsion under FC, 15th FC recommendations that we have to do that. But we voluntarily set for ourselves a target that we'll do audit of about 1 lakh villages. We had said uh, initially, we said 70,000, but when we, uh, Ministry of Finance, they said, no, you do for 1 lakh. And today I am happy to report that 1 lakh 20,000 villages, panchayats, gram panchayats, uh, dis some district panchayats and block panchayats too in the first year, we have successfully completed. And there were some states which did exemplary work. They are present here. They have been sharing their uh, sort of the way they went about it. Telangana, Andhra, these are uh, were the pioneering states in this regard. The support that we received from the Office of Comptroller and Auditor General, this issue of uh, doing audit of Gram Panchayats, such a huge scale. This, I think the need or the requirement, necessity, it was not just sort of adhering to the recommendations of 15th FC, but people felt at all levels, yes, this is required. And for 2021, we have done for almost 2 lakh villages now. 
which is almost 75 percent and for 21 22 for about 60000 uh, panchayats the work is already completed and uh, again voluntarily we have said ki for 21 22 we'll try and do 100 percent and lot of states at least 9 10 states uh, have already completed 100 percent audit of their gram panchayats which is a huge step forward there are some states or variety of reasons who have not yet made a beginning, say Arunachal Pradesh or Goa. Those are the states which need to gear up their socks. So one purpose of holding today's meeting was that after the experience of undertaking this audit over the last almost three years now, there are certain set of issues which are coming to the fore. When we analyze, one is ki do the audit, certify ki the audit has been done. The same is uh, forwarded by the state government and we release the funds. That is one way of uh, adhering to this. The second thing is that we look at audit. Ki what are the objections? How have those objections been uh, sort of uh, taken by the stakeholders? That is uh, the people who are uh, operating the system have they tried to remove those uh, discrepancies or anomalies or the same things are getting repeated over and over again because that we have to look at audit it is a way of not only finding faults yes if someone has defalcated if someone has uh, 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 just uh, siphoned off the money they will be dealt with as per law but if there are procedural deficiencies, if there are certain ways in which we can set those right, it is our duty to guide the local people at the local level to remove those deficiencies, those operational deficiencies. And at the end of the day, as uh, Secretary DWS was mentioning, the services for which, which are to be pro provided to the citizens they must be provided. So this is one area where we now have to move forward. What is the quality of observations, the draft paras, the paras which are formally sort of uh, listed in the report? And what is the action taken report thereon? And this is one lacuna which we have uh, come across. Ki even where states where uh, audit was being undertaken earlier there was no time limit fixed as to in what time frame action would be taken and to whom it would be presented lot of times if any action has to be taken against an officer the report would be sent by the district officials to the state government there it would become a part of file and those disciplinary proceedings may, may not, whatever it may continue for years on end. And there was certainly no sort of method wherein a report would be presented before the Gram Sabha. You look, in uh, the case of these audit observations, this is the action that has been taken. This is one, and this was happening even in a state where uh, you have very strong uh, local uh, government institutions, Kerala is here. And this one got to know in consultation. So this is and one area where there is scope for improvement. At the state government level, at government of India level, we have the PAC, Public Accounts Committee, where officers, uh, they select here, the report is once it is presented. But for the local uh, body level, in the rules, in the act, it is somewhere silent. And even in, say, Tamil Nadu, where it has to be presented in the assembly, it, will, it is just presented. There is no time whether how it is examined, what action is taken. It does not receive the sort of priority which uh, it ought to receive. And especially now when the fund flow to the panchayats has increased, many fold over the last say 10 years or so so this is an extremely important issue which we need to jointly discuss deliberate upon work out a methodology 
if required, make provisions in the act and rules where it will be presented, in what time frame it will be presented. And I look upon it, what has been recommended by the Finance Commission or what has been mentioned in the uh, guidelines uh, issued by Ministry of Finance, those are only to nudge us into action. As a sort of, uh, of senior officers responsible for implementation of these schemes, we, all of us, we feel ki, yes, this is a lacuna which we had not addressed and which we need to address. So this action taken report on the paras, which are formally communicated, in what time frame, where, to whom, and then how do we make it available in the public domain? so that there is greater accountability and transparency. This again, I think is something where we need to work together. Support from uh, Office of CAG and the accountant and uh, generals in the state will be extremely useful. The other issue which is for consideration is, as per the VR, we will also be discussing and deliberating upon the proposed guidelines for release of devolution funds. As ma'am mentioned, in the first year uh, interim award, there were no conditionalities. So the entire almost 100% fund was released to all states. Then we had COVID in 2021 and also 21-22. So while no questions were raised as such and in principle, we released whatever year. But still, the data would show that it's not 100%. There are some states where it has not been released. And from this year, the conditions have become more stringent. Whether it is holding elections in time, if the local bodies are not duly constituted, that becomes a hindrance. And this is happening even in a case a state for a state like uh, Karnataka where the district and uh, bodies uh, elections have not been held, it's being withheld. So this again is a way to nudge ki the constitution provides ki you have to have local body elections within the stipulated time frame, that period of five years. So it should be done within five years. Constitutionally, there is no provision for governor's rule or president's rule or administrator's rule. So when states write to us that we have appointed administrators and we are doing this, it does not really cut much ice. So this is the sooner we realize that the working of the state election commissions and the Panchayati Raj departments who are responsible for delimitation, reservation, all that has to be done in time. Now we have rulings of High Court and Supreme Court in this regard. And we are being more than Panchayati Raj Ministry. It's the Finance Ministry which is being uh, very sort of strict about it. They have not made uh, any sort of given uh, leniency, shown any leniency for any state. So this is another year. The other issue which will come up is setting up of state finance commissions. Not only setting it up, getting them to make their recommendations, accepting those recommendations, and then implementing those recommendations. We have so many instances where states just constitute a state finance commission. The reports are somewhere it is received in 12 months, somewhere 18 months, somewhere 36 months. By the time the report is submitted, accepted by government, and then, uh, funds begin to flow, two years are over. And there again, the finance ministry, and you are, you have served there. You would know, I have stayed in several states. State finance, out of five years, money is released only for three years. Full money, but now that would also be monitored here. So this again is something which will come out in the discussions, in the presentations which will be made where I would like ki all senior officers, you have to be aware of it. And furthermore, 
while at this point of time we are saying online audit of 15th FC funds. But in states where funds under state finance commission is going or any other scheme and Karnataka and all they have taken the lead key. Yes, we would like the audit to uh, cover everything. And it's only a question of time when audit should cover the entire funds which are being received. So this is again an area as to how we will go about it, what needs to be done. Another issue which I would like to flag and which is important because we have seen that the local fund audit department that in may, several states terribly understaffed, they face huge handicaps for strengthening them, for building a robust system, what needs to be done. As a part of 15th FC recommendations, it is there key. Yes, you can use a part of the funds to strengthen the audit. Now states will need to take a call. Can they provide some uh, portion of those uh, sort of administrative uh, funds, whatever is there to strengthen the audit mechanism? We have also said, and in several states, you have this social audit of Manrega is happening. You have the directorate there. We have also issued that social fund of a social audit of uh, 15th FC uh, year should also take place. But first two years, because of COVID, it was not happening. Now COVID has receded. So social audit also needs to be factored in. So the broader issue here is, and CAG they, and uh, the AGs, they have been doing performance audits of different departments. I don't see any reason, uh, reason why such audits, performance audits should not happen, even for uh, works being undertaken by the local uh, governments. Say if you have a solid uh, waste management unit functioning, you pick up a sample and do a performance audit. Ki how are they doing? How much are they spending? What are they recovering? Are they meeting the a sort of needs or not. In fecal sludge uh, treatment plants, one has seen if they are designed for uh, two truckloads per day. And the actual uh, sort of pressure is ki right from day one, it's four truckloads per uh, day. So if these things come up, come out in an independent audit, that will sort of draw the attention of policy makers, administrators at various levels. So it is a question of uh, how do we bring all these things together? The audit which is being undertaken by the local fund auditors, the basic audit, as uh, all of you know, that ob obviously would need to be done. E, e Gram Swaraj provides you the basic data. Now, from next year, uh, April onwards, we would be integrating eGram Swaraj with GEM portal. So, a lot of services and other things would also become available. So, we feel that it would ease the compliance burden to financial rules, GFR, etc., on part of local uh, panchayats and others. And that should eventually lead into reduction in audit objections relating to non-compliance with GFR. So this is something which we need to explain to the panchayats. The more services, the more uh, use you begin to make of GEM portal, better it would, it would be. And uh, this year we have already done a pilot wherein about seven to 10,000 uh, panchayats have begun to use GEM portal. So this will be launching in April. So that will have its own. Uh, so the point which I am making is that all these things are interrelated. And as an auditor, the purpose of audit is that we improve the functioning of schemes, improve the functioning of agencies, departments, 
and here local self government uh, bodies which are there and as ma'am was mentioning ki the focus is on service delivery there will be service standards which are laid down in the jal jeevan mission or swachh bharat gramin if water has to be supplied it has to be supplied for 4 hours every day then only you would be able to supply 55 lpd or whatever is fixed if streets have to be cleaned or dustbins have to be cleared they should be done every day or whatever frequency is decided and more than 2 lakh gram panchayats they have adopted citizen charter there are lot of services which they are providing to citizens kerala karnataka tamil nadu maharashtra you name it and people are doing it that should also become a focus of audit uh, yeah. the are those services being delivered within the year so while financial audit is one uh, part of the story these things also become extremely important and these will need to focus upon this these will not happen in a day but if we begin to work on it i have no doubt in my mind that over the next 2 3 4 5 years we'll be making a huge improvement in this regard where we were 3 years back we are at a much better place and people are amazed when they get to know ki now you have audit reports for so many panchayats and this has happened despite all the constraints that we have so personally i feel ki yes it's a huge step forward we should identify the stakeholders there are various stakeholders involved and as a as an auditor we have to address the concerns of each stakeholder one is ki as a scheme what is the requirement of finance ministry or uh, government of india or yeah that is one financial audit you do that the second is departmental uh, sort of guidelines and yeah, whatever is there that should be adhered to but at the local community level the citizens requirements may be much more than that we should also be aware of that and especially in water and sanitation we have seen with the moment you make them aware the response that you will get will far exceed anything that we can hope for from any government department where the community gets involved so these are certain issues and i am sure at some point of time we were discussing ki whether uh, ags and uh, the cag could think of coming out with district level reports for uh, the local uh, yeah where the panchayats as well as the urban local bodies some report which comes out it may not be a huge but even if it is a 50 page report based on whatever is there it may be a very good idea where the attention of district panchayats block panchayats administrators departmental officers it will get focused because state again becomes too big a unit district may be a good uh, sort of uh, yeah in this regard and the capacity building of local fund auditors the local fund auditors the social auditors and uh, the auditors of ag if that uh, sort of capacity building sharing of experiences something like that begins to happen so then i think as we go along things will improve so today i am sure that uh, the discussions that we'll have today we have uh, representatives from almost all states and uh, senior officers are here people who have experience of working in the field the inputs that we'll receive from all of you will provide a very good sort of uh, inkling of where we stand as on date and what needs to be done as we go ahead so i uh, i will end here thank you thank you very much sir and ma'am uh, you've summed it all up in fact you made a large part of my presentation redundant
but that is what we were looking to do now, sir, uh, that I would make a, a small presentation just uh, encapsulating all the issues, followed by one by sir, and then we propose to go from state to state. Uh, everybody, uh, we the enthusiasm exceeded uh, anything that we'd expected. So all the states have sent us PPTs. So, uh, so do we go through all presentations, sir, or what do you propose, sir? Jason. Please, yeah. Because we have the PPTs, because the moment every state begins to make a PPT presentation, then it will be at least 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. And then it will become a repetition. So what I would suggest is that take the PPT as given as a part of the record. And then we request the state representatives not only to give their uh, position as to where they stand, what they propose to do, but also some loud thinking on some of the issues that uh, we have raised. So then it becomes a much more uh, meaningful. Uh, or no challenge to yes. Feedback on use of e-grams or, yes. or anything else. Whatever. Portals ko use karna hai mein, yes. kuch entry, malab, kuch anything where we would benefit. Thanks, man. Progress some money. <laughs> So, uh, please start the presentation. So, I'd be looking to give an overview of the operational guidelines, sir. I'm uh, sorry that everybody here may not be able to see the presentation because of the design of the hall. So, you have the, the PPT handouts. Should you have difficulty reading it from the screen up there? Start the presentation. I'll start with the operational guidelines, sir. Uh, which uh, have been summed up, so, but just by way of recapitulation, uh, for release of grants in 22-23, the provisional accounts for 21-22 and 25% audited accounts uh, for 2021 should be made available online, which you've said that we've exceeded uh, those targets already, sir. Then again, to become eligible for 15th FC grants from 23, 24 onwards, which is what ma'am was saying that increasingly the ask is going to be greater. All RLBs have to have both provisional accounts of the previous year and the audited accounts of the year before previous. So Y minus two available online in public domain in addition to MOPR, eGram Swaraj and audit online. Uploading of uh, gram block and district development plans in the e Gram Suraj portal because now that it is work-based unless you have the plans you cannot be making expenditure so that is also a mandate the payments have all to be made through the pfms gateway so there is no excuse and uh, the the checks uh, should be ordered as uh, useless people shouldn't be using those anymore Duly constituted rural local bodies, which sir has already said, and minimum 50% utilization of grants released in the previous year. So because we have one account and the grants from uh, successive finance commission grants are all in the same account, this becomes a bit of a challenge. Uh, so just being able to see what's there in your account using PFMS is not sufficient. Uh, unless we can devise better ways of uh, delineating the year-wise expenditure. Then again, to become eligible for 15th FC grant from 24-25 onwards, all states which have not done so, they have to constitute the SFCs, act upon their recommendations and lay the explanatory memorandum as to the actions taken, which is the principal agenda for our meeting here today. Next slide. This is just a recapitulation. Uh, uh, that uh, the money is that have come. So this has already been mentioned in the uh, in the opening remarks of both secretaries. Next slide. I will quickly go over the pendencies uh, from various states that are holding uh, back the release of further grants. Uh, so pardon me if I have not updated the information in respect of any state, but. Uh, for Andhra, the first installment is due and uh, because they've not onboarded on eGram Suraj PFMS for transactions, so there's a delay. 
Arunachal are not here. Uh, Manipur, they've not received, uh, or the, the grant transfer certificate has not been received. So Manipur are here, hopefully when they come, uh, that, at that point they'll be able to tell us more about it. In Meghale, the GPDP has not been uploaded in eGram Swaraj. In fact, Meghale said, sir, that uh, that we need to be dealing only with the autonomous district councils and we don't have visibility about their village darbars at all. So that is something that maybe you can tell us about this. Mizoram are here. We've not received the grant transfer certificate and the second installment for 21-22 is due. In Maharashtra, uh, we have received a letter telling us that the, the letter to the your finance secretary is gone, but we've not received an out and out GTC, so which is holding back our recommendation. Uh, Nagaland are not here, uh, but for the record, the GPDP has not been uploaded in e Gram Swaraj, and they've not onboarded on audit online. Uh, Telangana, we've not received the GTC, and uh, Uttarakhand. It has been received and the utilization of previous year's grant is less than 50%, which is holding us back. So there are all these additionalities and uh, an audit online is a monitoring and evaluation tool, uh, but then increasingly it should become a foolproofing tool and that is the direction we have to be moving in. So any suggestions that you make today are going to be most welcome. These are the recommendations to be adopted. So this is just a recap of the, the first slide that I had. Uh, we have been making two distinct recommendations so far, but uh, if you see the, uh, the italics, uh, so increasingly they're asking for all panchayats to have uh, the audit certificate before they can be considered for the next grant. So, uh, what is your view is something that we'd be looking to hear from you that do we continue with the existing dispensation provided you can time your uh, panchayat elections in a manner uh, that will make it possible for all panchayats to receive grants or what the recommendations made for total due allocations to the states not based on number of rural local bodies to receive grants so this is uh, something that has been flagged already from 23 onwards 23, 24 onwards, the recommendations have to be made only for those RLBs who satisfy these two conditions. Uh, so uh, that is there already. In fact, you had asked, ma'am. So it is just a, an academic point that how do we make the e Gram Swaraj uh, accounts available in a separate portal? And therefore, the process and timeline by which recommendations to be made for release of grants need to be revised and finalized. As for the statistics, Next slide. So, so uh, yes, put the, uh, on record. In fact, Ministry of Finance has circulated and suggested the a revised sort of uh, procedure for release of funds from 23-24. So, what has been mentioned here is that we have uh, reiterated those uh, points, and we would like to hear from you. See, what are the practical difficulties that you would be facing? Because from here, we cannot be really releasing uh, panchayat-wise. Ki say, today, five panchayats have uh, certified, so you again get another um, certificate prepared and signed. And Because from a plain reading of what they have suggested, it appears that it will be a daily affair, where you in real time, uh, but we can't really do that. So from whatever we understand, at the state level also, it is next to impossible. And then uh, account keeping, whole lot of things will be issued for which we are not geared. Maybe five years down the line, ten years down the line, it may happen on its own. But that's we are still a far way from that. So one would like to hear from all the states, what are their views on the procedure which has been suggested by the finance department. So that is something which is a concrete sort of uh, outcome which we would like to obtain after a year and then we can get back to finance. Give them our uh, views. Okay, look, this is what uh, has come out uh, in consultation with all the states and we feel that these will be the practical uh, sort of difficulties that we will face. Check that. 
yes sir thank you very much sir so uh, this is the data with regard to the payments that have been made through e gram swaraj uh, and uh, the pfms interface you see that the states in gray are the ones uh, that have not onboarded yet so this would be a challenge going forward uh, it very clear yes, those are uh, goa andhra pradesh then uh, arunachal arunachal meghalaya uh, meghalaya nagaland manipur, manipur. yes sir. if you don't onboard this so then uh, release of funds from next year will be definitely impacted even in the current i'm mm. saying ki even in the current year yes. we, it's impacted but you can just forget about it so there are certain things which are non negotiable setting up state finance commission working on that non negotiable holding elections in time non negotiable having this uh, interface or doing uh, the uh, these are non negotiable so people either you come up with something ki yes we are uh, doing it in a better way but you can't be saying ki no we'll continue business as usual and uh, th there will be no year and we'll continue to receive so that's not going to happen and now this is uh, you can be rest assured ki even in the 16th finance commission when the recommendations are made there will be no going back on these okay so it's, there are certain things where all states have to and if 26 27 uh, 25 states have done it there is no reason why the others can't do so this is something which those states will need to understand very clearly chaliye mm -hmm. So thanks, sir. And this, yes, sir. So we can go to the slide after the next one. Next, उसके बाद और इसके बाद. This is the status of the provisional and the audited accounts for twenty two twenty three. So Arunachal, Goa, Meghalaya, Nagaland. Uh, these are the states uh, that are in red. and it is going to cost you and what uh, the, we've been saying this sir in fact for a whole year uh, when the information first came uh, that in effect uh, by not really facing this issue uh, you are depriving your panchayats or something that is theirs by right so uh, next slide you yeah, go to the last uh, next one so this is the status of the state state finance commissions which as sir has said is a non negotiable so one finds that uh, the states that have a tick in the last column are only a few and uh, in a lot of these states uh, there were older finance commission also which are long overdue so this is something that cannot uh, get you off the hook anymore and uh, states will have to precipitate action in this regard the next slide is the continuation west bengal yeah so these are the ones that the ones in green are uh, they have an active sfc in currently in position as for the state of panchayat elections uh, they, where they are delayed whether due to court reason or uh, maybe you had a delay during covid period and you could never make up for the lost time karnatak maharashtra manipur lakshadweep and puducherry uh, are the ones where election is delayed states where panchayat elections are due in 2023 so this is a heads up uh, that west bengal assam jammu kashmir ladakh and punjab should go about their task uh, so that there is no delay and states where panchayat elections are to be held in 2024 and beyond are the others that are all listed here so next one then about the action Okay. Action taken report module. Yeah, the ATR module. In the current setup, we are creating these generate. We are generating the audit reports. But what happens to these? What action is taken? Have we ensured that systemic corrections have been made uh, so that it doesn't happen in future? Those things are currently lacking. Maybe the some of uh, you already have systems like that. But we'd like to incorporate that into audit online. and make it into a form that is configurable so if there are state by the uh, specificities you can configure it according to your own needs and not have duplicate entry of data 
So those are suggestions that we'd be looking to get today from you all. Current access to the general public is limited only to KPIs. And uh, now, of course, the ATR module is being introduced to provide a course of uh, a status of action taken on audit observations so that they can be displayed in the public domain. And uh, the time, next one, the time element is very important in all this. So if you see the last point here, if the audit observations are not addressed by the 31st March of the corresponding year, the audit report would have to be published online. So these are things that uh, we need to be prepared for and uh, we need to be making these corrections to our system so that we don't get taken by surprise. That would now just a reiteration of the main agenda of the meeting. Next slide. That what is our strategy to achieve 100% onboarding on e Gram Suraj and 100% auditing? Then again, the RLBs not having duly elected bodies, so that there is no getting past that. The third is the ATR module in audit online for which we need to have state wise details and suggestions from the states for any modifications in the existing GTC format, which like I said, is a challenge because all your uh, finance commission funds go into the same account. So looking at it, one is not able to make out uh, what is the percentage in respect of the current FC. Next one, to become eligible for FC grants, all states have to constitute SFCs. So this has been said and your strategy in respect of monitoring of effective utilization of 15th FC, but a hard output that one expects from this conference today is your view in the uh, on the uh, the guidelines or the new instruction that has come from the Department of Expenditure that whether you'd be able to do it in the manner that has been professed, uh, going by the audit completion of individual GPs. And also so, on the ATR. And ATR, also on the yes, ATR sir. module, that also is important yes, because now we have uh, for 1920, 2021 and 21, 22 is ongoing for 1920 and 2021. I think the ATR has become due. So people should uh, just work out, uh, give their views. Ki what is the time frame in which they would like to place it to which body, whether it is to be uh, Gram Sabha, whether it is to be be any other body, I don't know. Or do you foresee that there is any way in which the higher local bodies, say whether at the district panchayat or ye, they can for uh, submission of ATR of Gram Panchayats, they could also do the monitoring, wherein you have not only the elected representatives of the district panchayat, but also the MLAs, MPs and the departmental officers who look into that. So can we Think of a role wherein at the district panchayat level, they perform, begin to perform the role of PAC, Public Accounts Committee. So then we are also sort of bringing our, uh, these three tiers into a uh, year and as per their capacity that providing that broad year, yeah, looking at things in totality at the district level and taking a suggesting way forward because as it is, all the departments are district based. All the departments have district based officers. So there will be certain inputs which would be required. So this again is something which I am uh, just suggesting you will have to think and say whether you can carve out a role, whether uh, it would be more uh, feasible, more appropriate to have a sort of PAC type of committee at the district level. Then what would be its constitution? Who all would be members? When it would be meet? It cannot take up uh, for everyone, but certain schemes, certain say for drinking water, sanitation, mm -hmm. some yeah, they can take it up and then see ki what the reports uh, highlight or what are the major. Yeah. So these sort of things can be thought of, but then this is something where I believe that there is a requirement of collective uh, deliberation, decision. decision making, and these things can only happen if the broad consensus is evolved within the state and these will uh, need to be sort of suitably grounded. <laughs> it cannot be done through administrative orders. So. Thanks, sir. I'll request you, sir, to address us and.
deliver your presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> Very happy to be part of the deliberations here today. Uh, Secretary MOPR and uh, other officers assembled here. Uh, so I am the additional deputy C and DG, and our job is to do audit. And uh, audit finally is is one of the main uh, mainstays of the accountability framework. Now, accountability framework. When we talk of talk of accountability, it also has a prevention and cure aspect. Like, you know, we are advised that when we cross 50, we should have annual health checkup. So we go there and uh, the, the, you know, all the diagnostics which are done, that is audit of our body. And at the end of it, some problems come out and corrective measures are taken. Maybe we take medicines, we start doing something. The other way is that even if you're 50 and you've not had many vices and you have been exercising regularly, taking your morning walks, your uh, medical report may come quite clean, no major problems. Okay, they'll say that, okay, increase your walking or something, but no need to take any medicines, you're absolutely fine. So, uh, ideally, uh, the preventive part, the more we strengthen that, the better it is in terms of accountability framework, because it works more. A process like audit is necessary, but it, it would always be less effective than a preventive action, right? Just as if you have already fallen ill, uh, no matter what medication you take, what you do, it would always have been better not to have that illness by taking due precautions in the right time. So, uh, as far as PRIs are, are concerned, I think a huge amount of effort has gone into that preventive work. First is the Gram Swaraj, then is the audit online. Linkage to PFMS. Now we are talking about uh, linkage to... Uh, um, Gem, gem portal. So all these things are helping in a, and once what happens is this is all, all this is automation. The moment there is automation, people become compliant to rules and regulations without even knowing it. There is, it is not that I am, uh, you know, consciously following a rule. Just because I am following that software or, you know, using the uh, features of that 